Hey everybody, today we have a little bit of a different vehicle for a Will It Run. We have this 1950, maybe 51, 52 Ford 8N tractor. It's been sitting here so long that no one on the property knows how long it's been sitting here. Um, the interesting thing is when it comes to tractors, I know about as much as someone who's never seen a tractor before. So this is gonna be really fun. We're hoping to get it running and get it driving around the property before we're finished today. All right, so the first step, we're just gonna get rid of the junk that's around it. Give us some room to move around. We thought these might be old hubcaps, they're not. There's even a light bulb out here that's not smashed, amazingly enough. Oh, wow. Check this out. Oh, this is heavy. This looks like an old steel wheel from the tractor, doesn't it? That is an old steel tractor wheel. All right, now, oh, look at this. Look at that. That's a radiator cap. It was on the ground in front of it. It's been on the ground a long time, but it's great to have it. Isn't that cool? <laughs> good deal. That, that's good luck charm right there. Um, I'm gonna get out my saw and I'm gonna cut some of these trees. Oh yeah. We have launched a Facebook page. Um, it's called What the Rust. It's just getting started, but why don't you come on on and join us? As I get more free time, I'll be making the Facebook much busier than it has been. And I think it'll be a cool place for more frequent updates on what's going on and cool pictures I find and stuff like that. One thing you always got to be careful about out here in the wilderness is finding snakes. And I just found one. <laughs> Luckily not the live kind. Let's see if it works. Yeah, it works. Wow. That's pretty cool. Okay. So we've got to clear enough for me to work in here. A couple of interesting things. Very common Ford type starter solenoid. It's probably shot, but I have one with me. Oil filter canister. Um, I'm not sure what that is, but let's check the oil. Oh, that's good. There's no water in there. It's black, but there's no water in there. Beautiful. Um, it's a little bit low, too, but uh, that's fantastic news, really. Fantastic. I've got an oil change with me. If we can get this thing spinning, I'll probably change it. Um, but let's do a quick walk around. Um, these things came out in 48, the Model 8N. It was a successor to the 9N and the 2N. And how that math works, I don't know, but that's what it is. And it's a very tough but simple tractor. You got the radiator up front. Very conventional tractor type steering. I think this brush guard may or may not be original, but they were optional. Headlights. It's got a four cylinder in it, a four cylinder flathead. And here, of course, is the biggest worry. When a tractor sits outdoors, Water can get in the engine pretty easily. Um, that and the plugs here can get rusted into the head so that when you pull the plugs, they snap off. So both of those are concerns today. Um, but we'll get to that next. Um, looks like that's the air filter. Oh yeah, okay. 
So here's the air intake right here, and that's just spinning freely, so I'm going to have to get behind there. But this is the filter um, for the intake to the engine. Yep, this is the intake pipe. This carburetor, you'll note, is not on top. It's on the bottom. It's called an updraft carb. Rather than air coming down, it's designed to suck air up. So that'll be a little interesting to work on. For brakes, it's got two brakes. I think this is the front and this is the rear. And it's got, or it's supposed to have a parking brake. Yeah, it's supposed to have a parking brake somewhere, but honestly, I, I don't see it. The mechanism appears to be gone, but it's supposed to have a parking brake there. The clutch is on this side, and it, it, it doesn't feel right. Yeah, that clutch doesn't feel right at all. Not at all. But we'll see. Um, why do I think this is a 50 and not a 49? If you come around here, I'll show you. So in 1950, these 8N tractors here had a gauge, and it was a combination speedometer, tachometer, and hour meter. It's gone, but you can tell it was there. The 48s and 49s don't have this hole. So it tells me it's a 50 to 52. Um, it's got a four-speed in it. Yep, here's the four speed, first, second, well, first and second, and reverse is up there. Now these transmissions are interesting in that you don't like go first, second, third, fourth while you're driving. Yeah, this third. Yeah, so all the gears are here. Um, you have to come to a complete stop for any gear. So that means you can start off and fourth in this thing if you need to. I probably won't be doing that today. Um, it's got oil pressure gauge, amp gauge, and this thing is the gas pedal or the accelerator. So this regulates the speed of the tractor right here. And it doesn't feel like it's connected to anything, but we'll figure that out. We, the first thing to do is get this hood off, check if the engine is seized, and take it from there. All right, so heading to the back, We've got each top of each fender has a Ford emblem in case you're plowing the field and you forget what tractor you're using. Um, this is the PTO, which means power takeoff, which means you can power attachments via this drive shaft that comes off of the rear axle, eventually powered through the transmission by the engine. And this thing has um, the makings of an attachment on it, although very, very, very worn. Um, but there is something here. We'll get that undug if we get it running and find out what, what kind of attachment that is. Um, there is blue on this. I believe that these came only in orange and gray, but this one's been painted white and orange, and it's also got blue. Blue here. Um, yeah, some blue on the dash. Who knows why? Maybe it's uh, parts from another tractor. Really hard to know. Um, it's interesting. This battery cable just hit, sitting here. Who knows why? Um, all right, so that's basically the tractor. It's got a backup light. The tires appear to have air in them, but they're so rot tough that oftentimes when they lose their air, they don't go flat. And this thing here is a truck box. I'm going to open it. I have no idea what's in here. Hopefully nothing living. Okay, nothing at all except cobwebs in this side. What about that side? Well, this side has some stuff. That's an old Cadillac hubcap. Looks like around a 70. Not sure about that though. There's a trimmering in here, a belt. You never know when you're going to need these, even if it's in rough shape. If you're out in the middle of nowhere, like we often are, a used belt can be quite handy. 
motocross toy. Now that's a bolt. <laughs> that's a bolt. I bet that goes to this thing. Whoa, I'm leaving that out. Okay. Enough fun. Let's get to work. So to take the hood off, it's pretty easy. Well, sort of easy. You got two bolts here. It looks like the ones on the bottom corners are missing. So it's two here. And then you come over to the front. And it's that bolt there. And, oh, okay. There's only one bolt to take off on the front. And oftentimes it makes sense to take the grill out too, which has a couple of clips that hold it in. One here that looks like it's missing and one here. Yep. So I'm going to oil these up real good so it can, it can, it can easily be removed. Hey there. What do you think of this tractor? <laughs> okay. All right. Let's get moving. All right. It's Cree oil time. I'm going to oil up everything. Uh, that needs to move on this thing. If you want to try this stuff, um, there's a discount code in the description of this video for buy one, get the second one half off. This is good stuff. Um, I, it's all I use right now. Look at that. Okay, here's the gas tank. There is, there is gas in it, and unfortunately there's rust under the cap. Um, but we'll have to check that once I get the hood off. The gas tank on these is actually part of the hood. It's going to come off when I take the hood off. That looks tricky. This one is in really bad shape. And it needs to come off in order to, to get the gas tank off. So look at these battery cables. I wasn't sure if this is positive ground or negative ground because it's been converted to 12 volts. You can tell that because this alternator is here. Um, so the way that you tell, here's the positive cable. And you see that it's got the larger post than this one because the colors you can't tell, obviously. So this thing is negative ground because here's ground and it's the smaller post so that's good to know um, i think i'm ready to start taking this hood off fuel line okay so the first thing i have to do is disconnect the fuel line so that when i take this off and i take the gas tank off it doesn't uh it doesn't stop me from catching on stuff yeah yeah that's a glass bowl filter right there Unfortunately, there's no filter in it. It's just simply a glass bowl. So the filter probably plugged at one time and someone thought it was a good idea to take the filter out and leave it like that. That is unfortunate. I have lots of filters with me, but not that one. So we'll have to figure out what to do there because this tank, no doubt, is going to have rust in it. We have to have a filter of some type. Um, this is not going to give me problems. It's already moving. So the oil did its job there. Surprisingly, uh, I thought it would fight a little bit more than that, but it is not. For how long this has been sitting here, it's pretty amazing. Okay, so there is a gas shut off here, and it is shut off. So this is actually dry. Um, that's fantastic news because if there's any crap in here, it's not in the sediment bowl already. I'm going to, this is now loose. I'm going to leave it connected till I get the hood ready to come off. Hey, when I went to uh, start taking the hood off, I found a toolbox with this old distributor cap, a mouse house, and some other stuff. What is that? Looks like a points and distributor kit with water in it. Muffler clamps. I don't know what that is, but that's neat. So, you know, track to utility, have your own little toolbox there. All right, first thing I'm going to do is just try to loosen up this hood. 
because it's pressed on there real good. All right, so this bolt is next to come out. Um, it doesn't attach to the grill, but it holds this on. And it looks like the other side doesn't have it. So the grill should loosen up once we get this off. All right. Okay, next up is the headlight wires. And I was hoping there might be some quick disconnect, but I don't see anything. So, if I can get to the wires, I'll disconnect them. Otherwise, I'm going to have to cut them, which I hate to do. Okay. So, it looks like only this headlight was working. So, I'll have to cut the wire for this one and then hook it up, hook both up when I'm done. So, we're making really good progress here. It's amazing how long it can take to get a hood off if you've never done it before. But we're almost ready. So, I was looking at the headlight wire. It comes into this taped mess. I'm willing to bet this is where the connector is to disconnect it, so I won't have to cut the wire. So I thought underneath this tape there might be a connector. It isn't, it's just twirled together. Interestingly though, there's no corrosion on it, which is very surprising, but I was worried about cutting the wire. Someone had already cut it and just twirled it together. So I think this thing's ready to come off. Okay, I'm going to do my best Iron Man impersonation because I don't know how heavy this th thing is, but it's got, a, it's got a gas tank in it with some gas, so it's not light. <laughs> I may to, need to enlist some help. Okay, this side I've got up. Come on. <laughs> it's catching on the the radiator. There we go. It's catching on the radiator. Ah. <sighs> <sighs> We good? Yeah, it looks like we're good. <laughs> this would be great if I was putting it on. <laughs> Farmers are clearly tougher than me. Clearly. All the while, I have to watch out for the radiator. I'm getting it. I'm getting it. All right. Insert six million dollar man noise. <laughs> yeah, here's underneath. Here's the gas tank. It is blue under here. Let's uh Let's see what shape this gas is in. There's not much in here. It stinks, but there's not much in here. Oh, there it goes. Yeah. Wow. Smell it? I would say it's less than a gallon so far, but it's got to, it's got to come out. Not much I can do about it.
Yeah, luckily there wasn't a lot in there. Luckily. Okay, a lot easier to work on now. Um, now I can see this fluid in here. Don't forget the lid was off. Yeah, the lid was off, and boy, I hope there's coolant in this. Yeah, there is. See, it's green. It's green. So that's great, great news. So hopefully the block's not cracked. Let's let's see if it's seized, right? That's the next step. Okay. All right, super important moment of truth. Is this thing seized? The little four cylinder, it should crank pretty easy. Oh, it's not seized at all. Look at that. It's not seized at all. <laughs> yeah. Success is nearly ours. <laughs> that is pretty cool. It's actually fitting itself. <laughs> that is pretty cool. Do that. That's pretty funny. Nature finds a way. It does. Okay. Oh, that doesn't look good. No, that, it, that, this, this tire takes air. Yeah, that would, I would say that's yep. flat. But I, I brought some air with me. Yeah, it's, it's flat. Out. Yeah, it's flat. But I brought some with me. All right, let's see if these tires take air. It's taking it. Oh yeah, it's taking it. Certainly enough to move around on if it stays up there. Okay, I've got this jump box here, the JF Eguo 6000. It's actually pretty cool. It looks like some cheap thing. It's small and everything. It's actually really a nice unit. If you're looking for a compact jump box, the neat thing about this one is it doesn't auto shut off. At least I haven't had it auto shut off on me, which is important. I'm going to bypass the solenoid and go right 12 volts to the starter and see what happens. Nice. <laughs> See how fast that six cylinder that, that six volt starter turns with twelve volts? Come on. Beautiful. <laughs> Isn't that a sweet sound? Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so guys, uh oh boy, look at that play. Ooh, that's a lot of play. Anyway, we didn't see that. Um I'm wearing a mic today because it's so windy out here. Sometimes when these engines spin over, the mic messes up the sound. So when it gets to the time to turn this, to start this thing, the mic's coming off. No worries. So I'm checking the points now. Looks good under the cap, doesn't it? I mean, it's got Except for that. yeah cobwebs and stuff, but it's a nice copper, copper terminal cap, and it's mm -hmm. pretty clean. Uh... That looks good. Um, we're right at the high point of the points. So I'm gonna just move it to the low point, hook up some juice, and see if, um, what? That sock. No, no, that's uh, non-conductive, so we don't have to worry about it. But of course, it's not good that it's in there, but it's non-conductive. Luckily, spiders don't eat plastic. These actually look really good. Mm. You know, you can buy a tune-up kit for this off the shelf at tractor supply um, but this doesn't need it I almost brought one with me today but this one doesn't need it it's beautiful so next step is let's see if we get spark yeah these points were really really bad 
Um, I'll show you in a sec. I'm using some emery paper between the contacts, but see that white? Can you see that? That all came off the points. So they're super dirty, but I'm cleaning them up. The points are sparking fantastic now, so that was the problem. They're cleaned up. Now I'm going to clean up the plugs next. This plug is particularly dirty, so all I'm doing is I'm hitting it with some carb cleaner and just wiping it down, getting all the junk off of it. And you can see it looks much better. These plugs were not in here very long before it was parked here. This uh, this rubber is real, real bad. So I'm just running an auxiliary fuel line into the carb. What I'm going to do is there's a drain on the bottom of the carb. I'm going to run some fuel through it in case there's any sediment in the bottom of that carb. It'll pull it through. I don't know if the battery's in. Going to do the touch test. Make sure there's no spark, nothing. It's dead, that's good, no spark. So I clean the cables. I'm getting ready to hook up the trigger. This may or may not work, the trigger, but I'll bypass everything if it doesn't. And he did take uh, the mic off. Yep, the mic is off so it doesn't screw up. So you might hear a bit of the wind. Yep. And the cars going by. Sorry guys, we figured you'd want to hear the, the engine more than anything. Yep. Um, we're putting gas in it. I've got a filter on this side so I can watch it. Mm -hmm. yeah, let, me, let me show you guys what he did over here. Look how nice and new that looks. Oh, it's the gas is pouring right on the carb. Oh, it is? At the bottom. Oh, at the bottom. Do you oh, see it? The there plug? must be a plug it's oh, missing crap. or something. Okay, I don't have a plug on <laughs> Well, you did say you don't know a lot about this. If that's the worst that happens, I think you've done a good job. Yeah. Is that where it's coming out? Hopefully it is. I do not know. No, it's not coming out of the plug. It's coming right out of the that, the carb throat. That, yeah, that's what. So it, that what means the, the float is stuck open. Oh, okay. Well, we're gonna have to take it apart. Not necessarily. No. Darn it. So gas was pouring out of the carburetor. The float must have been stuck. I think it's okay now because there's gas in the filter. But we'll see in a minute. I'm gonna put more gas in here. Good. Yeah. Great. I think that hammer worked. Looks like it. Looks like it's not a lot of gas getting through this. Oh. Does that help the flow a little bit? Yeah. I did. Yeah. It looks like that fixed it. Right. For now, anyway, it might stick again. But now we're ready to fire this baby up. All right. Let's get to it. Right, Richard, it's your first tractor. Yep. Hooking the ignition up. Let's try it. Okay. Fail. <laughs> All right, solenoid's not working. Okay, I, I anticipated that. I anticipated that. Is that the one you brought? Um, no, that's not the one I brought. Hook up the ignition. Let's try it. Okay, it fired a little bit. All right, I'm going to give it a little more accelerator this time and see if that works. The choke is still wide open. Yeah, that's that's right fire. there. Yep, yep. Okay, so yep, that's good. It's okay. firing. Oh, we almost had it. Hmm. Boy, it wants 
to go. We've got it running enough to go with the auxiliary tank. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's gonna go now. <laughs> Let's get the auxiliary tank. Have you ever seen that show, Green Acres? It kind of feels like that right now. If Richard gets on a tractor and drives it, I don't know what's gonna happen. All right, let's try this again with the new fuel system. Much improved. Uh, it only wants to run on nearly full choke so I need to look at that something's amiss here all right let's give this another try starter? Yeah. Yeah, it's the Bendix. Okay, so we took the carb apart and that's what we ended up. The gasket tore. There's nothing we could do about it. So we made one and it took a while. What has it been like an hour? between yeah. cutting the gasket and cleaning the carb, but this clean is this carb is now squeaky clean. The float's working wonderfully, the needle and seat are working wonderfully. So let's try it and see what happens. All right, we took the carb apart, cleaned it up, put a new gasket in or created a gasket. I don't know if that's gonna help. It wasn't so bad, but it was it was a little dirty. So let's see. Oh! <laughs> 
78. Touch it. <laughs> That's the most it's done since it first started. Yeah. So it's a week later, and look at this. We had another windstorm. This tree fell, the owner started to cut it up already, um, but it nearly got this tractor. I mean, you can't get much closer than this. Wow, it nearly fell on it. Um, well, it's gonna be a little more difficult today than I thought, because I have to clear all this, but at least it didn't hit it. If this tractor was another couple of feet forward, that would be, have been the end of it. So last week, this thing ran, but ran really terrible. So it's a few things that could be going on. It might have no compression. It might, the timing, spark timing might be way off. The exhaust system might be plugged, but I don't think so. But the first thing I'm gonna try today is a compression test. All you need it's a cheap little compression tester. You can get it at most stores. And you just thread it into the spark plug hole. No need to put a wrench on that. It's got a rubber gasket, so you just do it by hand. And then you just turn the engine over. Make sure that the throttle is all the way open, the choke is all the way open, so the engine can get enough air. And uh, then you just watch to see what the gauge does when you turn it over. You only need to turn it over a few times. All right, Christina's not with me today, so you'll have to put up with my crappy camera angles, but I'm doing the best I can. So watch the compression gauge here, and let's see what it does when I turn it over. Okay, 121. That's awesome. No problems there. So number one cylinder's in great shape. But that's all it is. You just do it one after the other. Um, I'm going to go do the rest and get back to you. All right, here's number two. Exactly the same. That's a wonderful sign. You want them all to be exactly the same if possible, although it doesn't happen often with old engines. So moving on. Number three. Wow, a little bit better. Um, around 124. All good so far. Okay, here's the last one. Let's see how this one does. Cross with your fingers. Perfect. So in a few minutes time, I've learned that this engine is in good shape. I don't know what the bearings are like, but when I had it running, it didn't make any noise. But certainly this has plenty of compression to run. It's, it's perfect actually. So next up, I'm gonna check the exhaust to see if it's plugged and the timing. The way it is right now is number one. This one is number four. This one is number two and this one at near the top is number three. That's completely wrong. So I swapped these two. This is now number two. This is now number four. This is now number three. Let's try it. All right, we're gonna try it. Plug wires have been swapped.
the choke lever doesn't stay out on its own, so I have to use these vice grips. I'm going to give it a little bit of choke, see if it likes that. It's warm out today, but who knows. Let's try that with a high rattle. Well guys, no luck. I can get it to run, I can get it to idle, but it won't come off idle. Um, not sure why, it's just, just not running strong enough. Compression's good, as you, as you saw, but just not running good enough. Um, I'm out of time today, so I'll have to come back to this one in the future. All right, we're back. Um, there's some variables that we need to eliminate here. And the first of that is spark timing. People say you need three things for an engine to run. You actually need four. You need fuel, compression, spark and timing if you have the first three and your timings off it's not going to run i think that's the problem here um, i wasn't able by myself to find top dead center exactly i can't find the timing marks that are over here on the flywheel so i was just doing it um, by by uh, feel and it was too difficult to crank the engine by hand and also feel compression here but through here um, you're supposed to be able to see the timing marks and I couldn't see them I'll take that off later and show you but I couldn't see any so I was kind of stuck by myself but Christine is here and uh, we've got a new tool to show you um, if you do this type of work you need this tool this is the tool it's called a top dead center whistle basically you screw that in the spark plug hole and when the piston starts to come up on the compression stroke compression stroke only this will make noise so you don't need to have two people or anything like that to find out where top dead center is. And it's super sensitive. Just a little bit of air makes it no make noise. So we're going to plug this in to number one cylinder. And when it starts to make noise, I'm going to keep cranking until the piston's at the very top or it stops making noise. That's top dead center. heard it okay so the pistons coming up still coming up still coming up okay I think that's top dead center okay so I'm curious, if any of you out there had dogs, how many of them were looking around for their chew toy while that demonstration was going on? Because <laughs> that's exactly what that made me think of. So a top set center, here's where the distributor is pointing. So that should be number one. And let's see if it is. So it's basically straight on with that clip. Number one. So the firing order is right. Um, so this one should be two, which it is. This should be four, and this should be three. So finally, we've got the firing order right. Okay, now we've got TDC. The next thing we're going to check is dwell. And dwell is the, uh, the how long the points are closed with the rotation of the distributor. I think what's going on here is A, the points are setting correctly, and B, we're probably the distributor's not, not, the bearing is not completely good, so the points are moving a bit. So we're going to try it. So we have a dwell meter here. The way you hook it up is the red goes to the negative side of the coil, the black goes to ground. This is ground, even though it's a red cable. Um, and you just spin it over, 
and you watch the gauge. Now this does not have four cylinder setting on it, um, but we're gonna put it on eight cylinders and just cut the number in half that we see. So I wanna see on this green dial about a 12 to 13 as it spins over. So let's see. And hopefully it doesn't go crazy all over the place. That's good. That was what, a 14? I was thinking 14, 14 15? Yeah, it was. Let's try it again. I don't think it hit 15. I think it was 14. Yeah, you're right, 15. So that would be 28 to 30, which is really too wide. So we're going to close it up a little bit. Let's try this again. It's a little bit under 15. Yep, that's good. It's moving around a little more for my liking, but actually not bad. We actually brought a second meter. Um, we're going to try that one too, because these things are ancient, ancient. Both of them are. No, it's not even close. So. Um, that stinks. So one of these gauges is way out of whack. Oh. Way out of whack. But so. I do know that I set it with the feeler gauge, so I'm confident that it's it's now right. So I think this is the last time the plugs are going in. So I'm putting anti-seize on them. Just put a little bit on the threads. Um, this stuff is good because it keeps the spark plug from rusting to the block. And on these flatheads, water puddles in here and rusts them to the block and they often snap off. So with this, they won't. Just, you can't get any on the spark plug electrode or inside, just the threads. All right, we're gonna give it a try. Points are set. Still worried about the distributor, but let's see how this goes. sounded pretty good didn't it yeah i haven't heard it sound like that before no <laughs> <laughs> all right that's good finally a smile on richard's face that's good that sounded really good if we could repeat that then we've got some yeah it's starting to sound like a tractor yeah I think we got something here. Let's see if we're getting any bounce in the dwell. Which I happen to believe we are. Let's see if I'm right. We're getting too much movement in the dwell when this thing runs, and I think that's throwing it off. So I pulled the distributor, and look at this. Look at that movement. It is not supposed to do that. So I think what's happening is this is spinning, and it's changing the dwell. I mean, look, <laughs> here's a good shot of it. There's the points. Watch how much they open. Oh, I see that. See that? Mm -hmm. And that's making the dwell jump, which changes the timing and causes all kinds of grief. So I have this new distributor, and it doesn't do that. 
right? It doesn't do that at all. Is that dirt or was there a seal there at once? Dirt. Okay. Yeah, they may have been. They may have been. Well, it's in. Yeah? It's in. I guess we'll try it. It's like old fans used to have, these little oilers. This was broken off the old one, which is probably why it wore out. Can you hold the choke out for me? Sure. Just pull it out, yeah. Pull it out. Leave it in, leave it in. Okay. I think it's flooded. It's way off, but it's got to run. Pull the choke out again. Richard, how does it feel? It feels good. I <laughs> bet it tough. does. <laughs> Whenever a distributor is a problem, it is tough to solve because they just don't go bad that often. But this is now number two for us. True. The Hornet was number one and this was number two. Mm -hmm. Wow. Let me ask you a question. <laughs> if you could do this over again, would you just change that out immediately instead the of messing with it? No. No, I wouldn't have. But I should have, I should have done the dwell check sooner. Okay. I'll get beat up for that in the comments. Mm. Well, that's okay because, you know what? I learn from your, you know, I don't want to say mistakes, but not doing things, I guess. You must be a genius. <laughs> Einstein. I, I learned, so, you know. Well, that's all good. We're I gonna... learned a lot today. Yeah. I'm going to switch the phone. Do a switch. Yep. Yeah. So, me, personally, I learned so much today. Um, 
and I ask tons of questions of uh, which you guys, the sun is so bright, which you guys will probably never know because I didn't have the camera on, but um, I had a lot of fun. I ask a lot of questions and um, that's why I ask, would you have just changed it sooner? Because Should have. in my, if I was not in my knowledge, would I just be like, oh, wait a minute. I've been through this experience before and I think I'm just going to change it now and be done with it. So that's why I asked that question. So Richard just told me that he's going to change the oil in the tractor and then we're going to try to drop it. I'm getting really excited. This will be the biggest drain plug you've ever seen. Yeah. Well, I've only seen like four so. Oh, I've never seen that before. <laughs> yeah. Normally it's thick. That's the size of the drain plug. Oh my gosh. Normally that's really thick though. Why do you think that's so thin? I don't know. But it's had a lot of gas poured in it. Well, it's updraft, so it's probably not because of gas. And I don't smell gas. Mm -hmm. We're going to just let that drip. Okay. All right. It's running great now. After the oil change, the oil pressure's way up. In fact, it's double what it was. So we're going to put it back together and see if it'll move. Okay, go. Yep. All right. Time to put some air in these tires. I know from before that these uh, do hold for about a week. All right, we're gonna see if this thing drives by someone who doesn't know how to drive a tractor. All right, let's see if this thing starts. Put some gear royal in it um, hopefully i can get into first gear after i move it back and forth a bit because in second gear it just doesn't seem to want to climb out of this hole in the way yeah you got it to move did you ever get it in first no I think I may have mm -hmm. I might not know the shift pattern because it certainly was a lower gear than what I was doing so all good there
So we just let it run out of gas. No sense leaving gas inside the carburetor. We're going to put the top back on, the brush guard back on, and uh, then we'll be finished. Pretty neat, huh? <laughs> all right. Got the girl all back together. She's ready to go. Has a new lease on life. Really happy about that. It was challenging, but so, so much fun today. Um, my turn. Yeah. Uh, I would like to say that I learned so much um, with Richard on this tractor. So what you didn't see is me asking him like hundreds of questions about everything. So he's very patient with me. Um, but guys, we wanted to say thank you so much for watching. Thank you for everything that you do. Uh, we couldn't have a channel without you. And you know, from the deepest part of our heart, we want to say thank you for that. Uh, if you haven't already, please show your your love and appreciation for the channel by clicking the subscribe button. Uh, clicking the bell is like added bonus for us. And if you haven't already, please check us out on our Facebook page. Um, it's just What the Rust on Facebook. And uh, Richard normally puts the link to our Facebook page down in the in the comment section. Yep. And mm -hmm. um, hey, until we we see you next time in a video, we will be chatting with you in the comments. So have a blessed week. Thank you.